Welcome everyone to our game analysis session today. And we have a couple of games that we're going to go over first. Okay. Uh, so first we're going to start uh, the game uh, played by Claudio against Nick Carlo. So let's see. So, okay. E4, C6. First of all, everyone here know the name of this opening? Karo Khan. Karo Khan. It's, a, it's a very good opening. I think it's a very good quality opening. And if you're at a stage that you're not sure what to do against E4 and you're sort of thinking about maybe learning an opening, this is an opening that I highly recommend. This is something where I like to play myself and to, you know, I play in the tournaments. It's still a relatively new opening for me because I played the French defense for over 20 years. But uh, last uh, couple of years I start playing some Karo Khan and uh, enjoy it. Uh, it's good opening. So he played the knight c3 move. And uh, already a little bit of a surprise because the main move is d4, d5, and here white chooses basically what to do. He has a few options here. He can play e5. This will be called the advanced variation. And he can take and play the exchange and then play a pawn of attack or maybe some other setup. Or he can play knight c3, knight d2. This moves basically lead to the same type of position. So it doesn't really matter what he plays, uh, w where he goes with this knight. Because in that case, you still take. So it doesn't really matter if he plays knight d2 or knight c3. Because after you take, he's going to capture back anyway. And you play bishop f5. Okay? So this is the position. So, um, but a white player played knight c3, d5 is correct, knight f3, bishop g4. Yep, I've actually played a game recently in Las Vegas, North American Open, and uh, one of the important rounds I had same exact position against the international master from Canada. So maybe in some point I will show you, while I'm, uh, next few weeks I'm here, I will show you maybe this this game. So bishop g4, uh, you always want to get that bishop out in Karo Khan. The main difference between the French defense and Karo Khan, in the French defense you sometimes have that bad bishop chopped in that you're trying to get rid of. But when you play the Karo Khan, you normally don't have a problem with that bishop. So that bishop is usually out. So that's why you play the bishop g4 move here, and activating the bishop and also pinning. Bishop e2, yeah, this is already... Uh, it's just a move. It's a normal move, but after this move, white cannot fight for advantage. This is just a passive move after which uh, black can play e6, knight f6, and get a very nice and a comfortable position. The challenge here is h3, of course. Because you kind of develop the bishop a bit too early, so he's immediately putting the question to the bishop. And now, what would you do in this position? If you're playing this position with black and your bishop is questioned, you have two options here, right? Capture or retreat. Capture. That's what I did also. I capture also because uh, this is also a move, but it's a bit of a risky move. If you do this, then he can take on d5. You take back. He plays g4. You have to go back here, and looks a little bit dangerous. His knight is active. He is threatening to play bishop b5 now. He is threatening to play bishop b5 check and putting pressure on this bishop, okay? So th there have been some games played like this as well, but this is uh, dangerous, a little bit dangerous. So that's why the best uh, thing to do here when you're questioned, you just take, okay? He takes e3, simply. And then you go knight f6, you just develop your pieces. It's uh, a roughly equal position. You know, white enjoys the pair of the bishop in this position, but on the other hand, he, you know, he doesn't have a very good control of the center, and he still needs to develop a lot of pieces. So it's roughly equal, this position. Um, so bishop g4, bishop e2 is played, and now e6 is a good move. Castle, knight f6. After knight e6 is played, um, white has few options here. He can push the pawn on e5, 
but in that case we are not afraid that we just go knight f to d7 okay and then we can try to play c5 and knight c6 good position uh, so he takes this is how the game developed knight e5 bishop e2 knight c6 very good play so far black is playing very well White is not playing very well. It's uh, uh, it's black has a equalized this game very easily. So at this point, actually, if uh, I had a choice and somebody say, "Okay, here is the position, which color you want to play with," and I will take black here already, because black already uh, actually more than equalized here. Okay. So knight c6, knight takes c6 d4 and uh, bishop e7 is played so now let me ask you a question uh, here when you had this position you have two options right where do we put the bishop here you played bishop e7 which is fine you may be worried about bishop g5 Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree. There is there is this pin. Uh, what I like about bishop d6 is just more active, actively placed, and he's not really threatening anything here. I mean, yes, there is a pin, but it's not like he's gonna do anything there right now. And he doesn't have any way to put more pressure on the pinned piece. Okay? So he doesn't have a way to put more pressure on that pinned piece. So you can just castle. Okay? Sure. Still. I'm still not worried about that. Just make useful moves. When he takes, okay, you take with the queen. He takes, you take. Let's evaluate this position. Spend a minute or two here. Everybody should think a little bit and tell me who you think is better here. Optically, it seems like white has a much better structure. If you look at the pawns, the formation. But in reality, who is really better here, white or black? Black. Okay, why? Why black is better? Okay, we have that uh, half open file, right? Half open file. Okay, what else? W what are the pluses you can mention? More pawns in the center. That is excellent. That means black has a good control of the center. Half open file. What else we can mention here? Bishop on either side. And, uh -huh. and we have a good bishop here. We actually, as a, if we compare now with the bishop and a knight, which piece is more active here? That is controlling more squares. You see the scope for this bishop? Look at the scope. Guarding a lot. And his knight, yes, it's on c3, but can't go much. Can't go too many squares here, okay? Okay? Okay. So, anyway, I wouldn't worry about this queen f3, bishop f6. I, we can actually, we, we will be happy if he does that. And the reason we go here, there is a very strong idea I want you to see here. When he plays the move b3, what is the best move here for black? What is the best move here to try to get a little bit more active? Which move? Uh, which move the queen to a5, then he can take on f6. So it could be a little bit dangerous. What you can do here, you can try to activate your rook. And play something like this. Rook goes to b4. Now he plays a natural move to protect it. And now, 
We have a backward pawn here, right? A pawn that is a little bit weak. When you have a weakness, what do you try to do with that weakness? Well, trade it off, right? When you have the weak pawn, you want to get rid of that weak pawn. The weakness should be eliminated if you have a chance. And here, look at this idea. You push. And now, look at that. Looks like this is a loose piece here now. <coughs> and if he takes, of course, you can just take back with a bishop on c5. And you have a fine position here. But you can also consider something tactical like this. Bishop takes h2 check. He takes rook h4 check. He goes back here and queen to c7. Attacking here and also threatening checkmate here. So tactics also work in favor for black, OK? So that's why. So keep this idea in mind that when you have a rook that can move with the tempo, we move that rook here, and it's on a half open file, putting pressure on the pawn on b2, and we don't stop. We try to force b3, and then we go rook b4, OK? So. Um, Bishop e7 is a fine move. Bishop d7, in my opinion, is a little bit better. Just a little bit better move because it's a little bit more active. So bishop e7 is played. Rook d1, black castle, castled. Rook b8, correct. And now h6 looks like played. Bishop f4. Yeah, now he's attacking the rook. Uh, maybe it would have been slightly better for you to play h6 now. So when he plays bishop f4, it doesn't come with the tempo. Okay? So we just change the move order a little bit. If you put the rook on b8, next move he's got the bishop, if you have that h6 in mind. So you can maybe start with this move first. And then, when he goes back on h4, then you go rook b8. OK? That's a possibility. Because now, bishop goes to f4. It's a pretty good bishop. So bishop d6 was played to exchange queen d6. And now, after queen d takes d6, what is black trying to do here? If, let's say, somehow black, white played uh, this move h3. Absolutely. You want to play c5 here. Yes. You, he, he, he also understands that what you're trying to do. Yeah, he's a pretty good player. So he sees that you want to do c5. He want to get rid of your weakness. Okay? And that's why he's stopping it. Okay? You could have played c5 earlier if you really wanted it. But you wanted to get more developed and then play it. But Sometimes if you want to prepare everything, some, you might not have the time to do it. So now, uh, he played knight a4. Knight is on the rim, but it's a concrete idea to stop c5. So knight a4, knight d7 played, queen a6. Now he's trying to get a little bit more active. Queen c7, c4. Yeah. So now he's active and he wants to play rook a c1. Looks like now he might be he might be slightly better here, okay? He might be very slightly better here. Okay. Okay, so c4. Queen to b7 played. Exchanging the queens. Rook a c1. Rook f b8. Correct. King f1. King goes on f8. Knight c5. Knight takes c5. Oh, I guess uh, c takes d was played at some point. 
Okay, some some point this was played. Exchange already occurred. Knight c5, rook c5. Um, okay, knight c5 was played and you took. But then his rook is coming uh, to a good square on c5. So the question is if there is anything else that you can try to do here to stop his rook from coming to c5. Knight c5 was played by black, but the question is, is that the best move here? Can black do something better here, maybe? Of course, it's easy to just exchange, but we have to make sure when we make the exchange, we don't allow the opponent piece to get active. And I feel like he's getting a little bit active here. Rook to b4. Uh, there is a little problem with that move. Aha. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the knight is a tricky piece, yeah? It's a tricky piece, and he can try to fork you. So, but you're close. You're very close you, because you're uh, fighting for some squares. But you have to just put that rook to a little bit better square. Just a little better square. and should be fine. A little better square for that rook. Uh, C7 could be played. Yeah, C7 could be played, which is a fine move. Then I think after this he will just capture Capture, takes, takes, check. Okay, king goes on b6. So this would have been fine for you. You know, it's if he has two rooks here, it could be strong for him. But if it's one rook, you can handle it. But another idea is rook to b5. Challenging that knight. Okay? Trying to see now what is he going to do. Just, just challenging it. Okay? You know, if he takes, just king takes. Knight takes d7, king takes d7. Now, if, for example, a4, just go back. And the threat now is to capture it and win the pawn on bd. Now it's a, bit, it's a problem for him because b3 is weak. Okay? So that's what you could have done. But you took, the reason I don't like to take too much, because he gets the control of the C file. Yeah, now he got the control of the C file, and I think you're slightly worse now. He went here, and then, we don't have any more notation here, but you can tell us what happened here. On A7? Yeah, so he played here. Uh-huh. F6. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, but this is already a slightly worse position for for black. Black already is slightly worse here, and who can tell me the main reason why black is worse here? The main reason why black is slightly worse. Yeah, white has the control of the C file, and black rooks are also doubled, but unfortunately they're not really. It looks like they're attacking, but you can never take on b3. So, okay. So that's why it's... Uh, don't necessarily want to... Uh, basically, the rooks are placed better here. 
on the C file than the rooks on the B file. Okay. Um, it was a pretty close game. It was a pretty close game. Black was uh, black came up actually a little better out of the opening. It's just uh, later on in the game, like for example here, uh, I think C5 should have been played early. Did you think about maybe playing C5 here early? Don't wait too much, yeah? If, if I was playing black here, I think I would just go here immediately, put the question to the bishop. I say, okay, decide now, what are you going to do with your bishop? You're going to take or you're going to go back? So if he takes, then I think we are extremely happy with the dark square bishop. So he probably should go back here. And then I can play this move, rook p8, without worrying about that he, he can claw bishop f4, attacking. Or another possibility here is to play queen a5. Actually, this is probably the best move here for you. And next move is c5, no matter what. Because you want to get rid of that pawn. So the c5 is coming, and uh, you know, black, black will be slightly better here. And then you have a great setup after c5, rook fc8, <coughs> rook ab8. Like let's say he plays here, you go here, take, and then you go pressure, pressure. And if you go something like this, knight on the rim, what can you do here? You need to do a double attack here. Excellent. Queen before double attack. Two pieces, you know, this is not a very good idea to have one piece on this side, another piece on the side. Double attack. Now he has to take. Yeah, he's not losing a piece, but he's in trouble. And now the knight is hanging on a4. And if he plays b3, bishop takes a1. b3 is losing the rook here. So he cannot do that. And now black is clearly better. So that's what you had to do here in this position. Play h6 first, attacking the bishop. Before you play rook b8, play h6 first, attack the bishop. Bishop goes back to h4. And a very strong move, queen a5. Activating the rook, getting ready to put the rook on b8 and c8 and play c5 because, after all, the c6 pawn is a weak pawn. It's a backward pawn, right? And when you have a chance, you want to exchange that pawn. This pawn is a weak pawn. So we want to play c5 and we want to get rid of that pawn. And then we have the open lines for our rooks because rooks, they want open files. So create those open files to have the advantage. This is advantage for black. Yeah, just, just remember when you put your rooks on b8 and c8 here and after c5 you have some nice pressure. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay, the next game we have here. Okay. Okay, Daniel and uh, this was played Oh, this played uh, not a very recent game. Very well. Okay, then against Amir. Okay, great. Let's start. Okay, you are black. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Okay, let's take a look. Draw. D4. D5. Knight F3. Knight C6. Interesting. Do you like to play the Chigorin defense? Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's why I asked that question, because black is playing knight c6. The Chigorin defense is c4, knight c6, yeah? And who is the most famous grandmaster who played this against Gary Kasparov? Because this is considered a little bit uh, not a very, you know, main type of opening, a little bit... Uh, a little bit questionable, I want to say, this opening in general, like when you play very high level. But this player, very unique player, didn't afraid to try this against Kasparov. No. Younger, maybe he did also, but the game I remember was Morozevich. Russian Grandmaster Morozevich tried this against Kasparov. 
and he tries against some other players. But this is a type of opening that you know it leads to unbalanced uh, type of positions. But your opponent played knight f3, and you went knight c6. Bishop f4, knight f6. In this position, bishop g4 move makes sense for you to play. That's the reason you got your knight out, so you can play bishop g4 and put some pressure. Now there's a pressure on g4. So if I was playing this position, probably the natural continuation here for you would be to try to get this bishop on g4 and put some pressure on that knight. Now he goes here. You could go knight c6. A little bit more technical. A little bit better is to play e6. Then you can go bishop d6 and exchange his strong bishop. And if he captures you back, you can take back with the pawn even. So this is the easiest way for you to equalize this game. There are other ways to play here, but if you want just equality, and that's what you should do with black. When you play with the black pieces, equality is perfect in the opening. First equalize the game, and then try to aim to you know, develop initiative. Because normally with black, you can get a good position right away if your opponent is playing really badly in the opening. Because you know, even if he makes a one or two small inaccuracies, that gives you a chance to equalize the game only. Okay, so, so remember when the knight is on c6, bishop g4, it's a chigorin team to get that bishop out there. Knight f6 was played. e3, aha, this next decision, I am not liking it that much. e6 was played. From the first glance, it looks like, okay, it's just a normal move, right? But what is the problem with this move? Why I say I didn't like it that much? What was that reason? Can you find that reason why this could be a little bit questionable, this move? Excellent. You just trap your bishop. So for the, I don't want to say for the rest of the game, but uh, for a long time now, we're going to be trying now to find a way to get this bishop out. So what's the best thing to do? To avoid that, what could you do first? And then play e6. Pin it. Remember, pin it to win it. So that's why. <laughs> so you have to, even though they might be simple things, yeah, but in chess, even for strong players, even the simple stuff, if that's what we do, you know, when we play, most of the time it's just a simple idea. So it's a pin, looks good, go for it. And then you play e6. Because not only when you block your bishop here, not only you have a bad piece now on c8, that piece is causing a problem getting your rook out. Because it's going to be bothering us, you know, between these pieces now. So one bad move in opening, and suddenly for uh, next maybe 20 moves, you might not feel very comfortable. Okay? But if you play bishop g4, e6, bishop d6, you're going to be feeling very comfortable in this position. Okay? So everybody should remember, okay, in this type of positions, you want to activate the bishop before you lock in that bishop, okay? So remember that. See, that's, what he, that's why he got this bishop out. He didn't want to have the bishop, so that's why you lock in. Bishop b5. Bishop e7 played. Okay? Might have been a little bit more natural to go here first to unpin the pin. So, and if he tries to play here, this is bad now, you take. And now he's got the loose piece on b5, okay? So, uh, you're not in that hurry to castle right away here because there are absolutely no threats. So, it would have been slightly more accurate to go here. So, he went knight e5, bishop d7, takes takes castle a6 bishop went back you castle c4 
If white manages to get the knight out, bring a rook in, he might be slightly better here. Okay? Rook ac8. a3. Rook fd8. b4 now played. d takes c4. Bishop c4. Wait a minute. Knight takes d4. Excellent. Wow. Excellent idea. Very impressive. And this idea works because black player, instead of worrying about his development, instead of getting his knight out here, for some reason he's still keeping the knight here. He shouldn't keep the knight here. You should get the knight on c3. This is a move without thinking you play. Okay? Because the piece is not developed. And we are already on move 12. And if that piece is not developed, the rook is not going to get developed. So we need to get those pieces out. Okay? So that's why we want to play the move knight c3 here. He played before. Actually, my original idea was to play e5 here. I don't know if you noticed that move. e5 is also winning a pawn. e5 is also just a natural simple move. e5 and he cannot take because if he takes, you take, sorry, you take, he takes, you take. Okay? And then can do much. <coughs> but instead of e5, you played knight d4. This might be even better. The point is if capture, uh, it's a little bit of an unusual idea. I have not seen this kind of idea in the early opening stage. But basically, uh, there's just a lot of loose pieces here for a moment. And now if take, Black just takes and he's winning a bishop. Winning one of the bishops. So, uh, how, how did you find this move? It's just You just saw the idea? Good. Very good for you. <laughs> Queen b3 was played. Yeah. It's too bad that you drew this game. Because you played very nicely. You took on f4 now, bishop e6. This, this doesn't work. No, this doesn't work. Check. King f8. You're just up a piece here. You're surely winning here on the path to the victory here. All you got to do is just play a little bit accurately. But this is where a lot of games sometimes are not won. When you get into a winning position, you sometimes relax. You can never do that. You only relax when your opponent stops the clock and resigns. You can't relax even when you get a winning position. I've done it myself a few times and it's not good. G3, Queen E5. Queen E5. Okay, it's, it's, it's a fine move. Uh, Um, another, this is, there is a square that just looks so good for that queen here. You know, it's just like entering into his position. Absolutely. Absolutely queen f3. Now, your queen is so active here, it's going to be very difficult for him to remove it from there. And on top of that, you attack the knight. So he needs to protect his knight. So most likely he will play rook ac1. And then he will play here. Rook on open file because you want to kick that queen. Now he goes back on h3. And now the rook is hanging here. So we cannot, unfortunately, lift our rook up here. This is a trick. But it's, 
it's solvable. Let's just move the rook away now. Okay. And now we can go bishop e5 next. Because your queen is better than his. Even though you're up a piece, you probably want to exchange. But first of all, when you play queen e5, you want to exchange. It would go back. But here your queen is too active. I think he's going to maybe play queen g2 and propose the exchange himself. And then you can exchange and just win the game because of the extra piece. OK? That's what you should do. Okay, because queen e5 would have been a good move if you could force the exchange. But if you're not going to accomplish the force, then you shouldn't do it. Okay? Then you should go queen f3 for sure. Now, queen b3 was played. Of course, white doesn't want to exchange. He knows he will lose if he does that. Rook a d1. Rook c d8. Rook d3. Um, queen h5. King g2, bishop e5, rook f3. OK, not bad. Exchange. Queen takes c3. Queen f7 still. You're completely winning. So I don't know what happened later. We'll get to there. Check. King g8. OK, this is just the winning position here. That's why I'm sort of moving fast. Black is just up a piece. And it's just, uh, let's get to the moment where things started to get a little bit out of control. Rook db8. That's what you played, right? Uh, yeah. Not sure if I uh, like that decision. Because you have a rook on an open file. OK? So he doesn't have any threats here. He doesn't have any threats here. Um, what can we do here? Well, the idea I see here, it's again going back to playing simple chess. When you have a rook on open file, what's the first thing you need to look for? Enter that rook where? Seven That's it. That's all what you got to do. Play it simple. You go rook to d2, and your rook is on a second rank. And now, I'm not just going to be satisfied with that. This rook is coming also. Then it will be real power on that second rank, putting pressure. You also have some queen d5 type of ideas as well here. Okay. Rook d2 is very strong. Okay. Queen b6. Yeah, this move shouldn't do it. Very important to remember: do not deactivate the developed piece unless it's absolutely necessary okay so remember do not deactivate very important that you don't do that because if you do that then it could be some problems that's the idea to remember Rook d7 is good if you worry about that. Rook b8. So these this are good. But but not, uh, don't want to go to uh, b8 here, OK? a4, knight d5. OK? Tactic. Queen e7. You're back. And here, you would just need to find a way to exchange pieces. That's all. So queen e2. Queen e6. Why, why, why don't you just go rook f8 and just... Yeah, I feel like some, some, some moves were played here that uh, they weren't really doing that much for you. Like in this position, his active piece is the rook on f file, right? Mm -hmm. When opponent has an active piece, what do we do? Trade. Trade. That's it. So how can we trade here? Rook f8.
If capture, I just capture. Okay? Yeah, if he wants to go away, sure, go away. But then you have a pressure on that F file. So it's possible that you can try to attack him if he moves away, like go queen e1 or something. Okay? So instead of entering anywhere, I think you just go rook f8 and you just exchange. Okay? So queen e2 was played. Uh, queen e6, queen h4, knight f6. d f8. Okay, still winning. Rook e3, queen d5 check. King g1, queen h5. If he takes here, you have, did you see the move that you can do? Uh, if he had taken check, check with the queen. Okay. Because otherwise, if you take back, he takes the queen. And uh, if you take his queen, he has an in-between check here. Right. But uh, black has a check here. And after he comes up, then you just take. OK? So queen h5. He didn't do that. He played rook e7. Take. Take. Rook f7, rook e2. Um, rook a1. A5. Yeah, again, in this position, you just need to play simple. Like this rook is the good piece here, right? Mm -hmm. So let's try to trade that good piece here. If you just change one pair of the rooks, it just task would be so much easier. So you just go here. Instead of going after pawns or anything, you don't need any of that. You just go here, rook fd7, and then you have two ways to do it. Rook d4, exchange and start picking up those pawns, or you can also go rook d2 and exchange. Once you exchange one of the rooks, you will win this easily because then he wouldn't have any type of contraplay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, this rook a1 wasn't necessary, okay? a5. And now um, c5 was played. Rook takes c5. Rook c4. Knight d7. Take. Knight f6. Yeah, you just need to exchange that rook. <laughs> I can just go here and just start attacking him on that second rook. <laughs> But anyway, I just, I just don't know how you, you did not win this one. <laughs> <laughs> OK. OK, we, lose, we don't have any more notation. But tell us what happened here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I ended up giving him back the piece. Uh, you might have just hung the piece, huh? You have, you know, a great game. And, uh, you know, the victory seems like in the bag, you know? And then suddenly, some things happen. But, uh, I think at this point it's pretty clear that black could win. So today we'll learn that you know when you're winning, you don't relax. Okay? Remember, game is not over until he stops the clock, reaches the hand. That's when the game is really over. I myself had games where I was completely winning. You know, seven pawn advantage. I mean really winning. But then I end up making some inaccuracies. Okay? So very important. Mm -hmm.